This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Oh, I love a good loophole because you know what? There's a sadistic side to us where we like cheating the system oh, sometimes. Oh, no, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep at night. I'd be so petrified what if you cheat about the system? Being, being busted. Oh, come on. If it's practical and it seems fair in your mind, if you can justify it, then by all means, run hard. Oh. Well, well, see, this is... And we've spoken about loopholes over the years. I get so excited with this. What about the guy that we spoke about? This was a few years ago, and he showed us how he makes over a million dollars a year using a simple loophole to beat gambling sites. Now, this is with the game of tennis. Have a listen to this. Most gambling apps allow you to bet live in play on the outcome of a single point or game. Court siding works by having someone physically at the match to exploit time delays of just a few seconds between a point being won or lost and the umpire inputting the score to an electronic device. The info from the umpire is transmitted to the bookies around the world so they can update the odds on their services. So so they were so sophisticated that they would have people physically at the game with headphones on, Kate, or Mm. little AirPods in or whatever, and as soon as a point was finished, they would get in before the judge would Mm. or the ref at the tennis match would declare it because as soon as they declare it the ref that means the betting sites can then pay out anyone who's bet on that point but if you can get in before the ref you can put a bet on before the ref makes his decision it was unbelievable very second high pressure yeah it is high money and he was making over million millions of dollars a year okay so let's talk about flying now because i've got a couple of here there was expensive, fo- isn't it? Oh, it's, unbe- it's ridiculous. You know. Um, there was a 45-year-old woman who booked 900 flights between 2015 and 2019, and she booked these flights without intending to go anywhere, but rather what she was doing was counting on them being delayed in order for her to cash in on travel insurance policies. So she would purchase flight delay yeah. insurance, then she would analyse weather conditions and general flight on-time statistics in order to determine how likely it was that that flight would be delayed. So she, she must have known the average out of 900 of, of the flights that would be delayed. She's bet on the average of the delay. So this isn't a, I- even about flying, it's about gambling again. Well, it's, it's about, about gambling. Yeah. It's about taking out the insurance on the she, delay. The risk. She, she made $600,000 from it. Wow. This is, okay, let's let's How do you go book a flight without paying for it. Let's go closer to home because thirteen twenty four ten. If you if you've used a loophole, we can change your name. You can do whatever you want. Um, this is Jetstar, and this is in New Zealand. Have a listen to this: a New Zealand man has managed to book fifty eight free flights by utilising a loophole in Jetstar's beloved return for free promotion. Mm-hmm. Two hundred and forty bucks, right? You could fly from Auckland to Sydney. But on the way back, you would get it for free. Right. So it was $240 to fly to Sydney, and then it was for free to fly home. Mm. But what this guy was doing, he was booking it, paying his $240, then he would ring Jetstar and go, I can't, I'm so sorry, something's popped up with work, I can't get the flight home from Sydney to Auckland. So they would go, okay, no worries, we will refund you the money that you've paid for your flight, which was $240. I get it. So he would get the flight to go to Sydney, Kate. Mm -hmm. He would then cancel the flight home. He wouldn't get get the flight at all. He He wouldn't take the flight. No, he would. So he'd fly there. Yeah. Then then what he would do, when he got there, he got the $240 credit back, then he would book the flight to go home again, and then he would get a free flight back to Sydney because it was $0. He did this 58 times. Since 2020, he's been flying to Sydney for free from Auckland. And it's a loophole that's legal. You're a genius. I mean, somewhere in the T's and C's is probably something. Don't you think? Where they look at it and it's written in there somehow. Have you ever read the T's and C's Nobody reads the T's and C's. No one does. Oh, my God. Forget about that. They're too boring. But if you get away with it once, too, could you imagine the excitement when he pulled it off for the first time, Fitz? Thinking, I have just cracked the code. I have... I have... Proven there's life on Mars. Do you know what Did I mean? Yeah. Do you know what he's he hasn't told others. 
he's done it by himself because I'd be too excited. Yeah. I'd be, I'd have family members, friends, everyone yeah. would be what flying about, for. I'd book out the whole plane, what, free flights hey, for everybody. everybody. What about the guy? I mean, there's two different examples here. Fitz, one was I think the Monopoly story that uh, Matt Damon was in a film about, which was a hack job too. Was it Matt Damon in the film? Yeah. And it was McDonald's. No, it's it's a do- it was a document. It's yeah. an actual documentary. It's a true story um, about how the letters were getting out in the game of Monopoly and they were selling oh. them and making money. But the other one fits was that that family and friends who found out a way of rigging the lotto system. Yeah, how? And they would all, there was about 32 of them that were in on it and they'd win every time and share the winnings. How and can you rig them, lotto? They took them yeah. so long to work out what they were doing but they were cleaning up. They've had one over $50 million. Okay, loopholes. We're looking for loopholes. If you've got one or you know of one, we'd love to hear from you. Jerry, hello. Hey, how are you going? What's your loophole, mate? Well, if you go to the movies and spend a lot of money going to gold class yeah. for a nice little date night, you can contact them afterwards and let them know there was a kid crying the entire movie and ruined it for you, and they'll send you new gold class tickets. <gasps> Are they really? Oh, Jerry, yes. That's a good one. That your experience was wow. ruined somehow. <laughs> I mean, that's a little bit like there's a hair in my soup kind of gear, isn't it? It's it know, is, it, yeah, it's, it's bad. It, you but can. you don't sound. But you don't sound <laughs> guilty you don't at do all. It all the time. No, know? I know, you, but no, that's a good loophole. Good one. Do you know what? They're not cheap, too. Gold they? class? No, God no. no. Well and done, then you Jerry. sleep through the movie. Well, that can happen. Nearly Jamie every time. Jamie in St Mary's, what's your loophole, Jamie? So I used to do DoorDash and you would go cold shopping and everything for people and it's a little bit sneaky, but I would collect all the flyby points and they would rack up so quickly. I collect everyone's flyby points and it was pretty handy. Oh, that's... So how do you... So would they just go, oh, look, I do have flybys, but I can't be staffed here, yeah, whatever, and then you and you can then put them onto yours, Jamie? Well, basically, you just go shopping for people and you wouldn't have their fly-by stuff, so you just get your own cards. It happens a lot in businesses, too, where the boss of the business will, let's say he's got a bricks business, Um, he'll buy all the bricks. We need 500,000 bricks and he'll put on his credit card and then reimburse himself from the business, but he got the points. Uh, One of the great tricks, guys. Very good. Yeah, clever. Katie and Penrith, what's your loophole? Hey guys, uh, so if you don't have enough money and your cinema is a little dodgy, uh, buy student tickets. Buy what? <laughs> Better check. Buy student tickets. Oh, oh student oh, tickets, yeah, yeah, sure. Another movie hack, movie loop. Yes. Oh. You, well, no, you, can do, check. you can do that on the web, can't you, Katie? You sure can. Do you know yep. where and half the time they don't they don't pay their, their student workers enough anyway, so they don't care. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you don't feel bad about it. Do you know, I get do you know it. a league? No, well our, our local cinema they don't even clean properly, so Oh okay. <laughs> okay. Well Katie's off oh, yeah. her local <laughs> cinema. That's Katie's sure. not happy about that. She's declared war against her local cinema. Oh, She's no, we're, furious. We're, usually people feel better when you are being exploited. And you know what? I, unfortunately flights have been so expensive lately. Yeah. That I'm thinking if there's any way you can scam yourself a free flight here and there, mm. I, I'm okay with that, Kate. That loophole you've got two fits with the tax department and those offshore accounts in the it's Virgin a- Islands. Amazing. That's working really it's well. It's been happening for 30 years. And, and, you know, to my uncle who still lives in the Cayman Islands, I... I <laughs> He's, he's been got, doing a great job. you got to love Uncle Terry. Fits in Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.